Yo, everybody, and welcome to the new drama. This one's a good one. It's a good drama. I like this drama. There's a YouTuber by the name of Mark S. Brownlee, as Will Smith likes to call him. And he has recently gotten into a, a quite a bit of a, a dilemma. You see, he made a video titled The Worst Product I've Ever Reviewed for Now, where he talks about this product, which is absolute shit. It's a $700 dog pro dollar product, and it's shit. It's awful. It's poopy. It's poopy, yucky, poopy, poopy. And he made a video talking about how it was uber ga pooper. Now, this man, for this video, the worst product I've ever reviewed, got giga canceled on Twitter. Man got dragged across Twitter. Holes stretched by the masses. All right, this got, a, it's got way too graphic. Basically because he destroyed this company. This company CEO started complaining, saying just a single video like this with 6 million views in four days saying that this is a shit product. He killed my company. I had a dream. I had a dream. I wanted this to be a beautiful company. And you murdered it with a single YouTube video. One YouTube video murdered my entire company. And he was getting canceled basically for doing that. I love how the cancel mob is always so it clearly comes from a place of jealousy. They're jealous of Mark Ass Brownlee's insane success that he can make a video like this and take down a fucking company. And uh, their solution is to cancel him for it and say that it's unethical. I would totally do it, but like I won't because it's horrible and unethical. So anyway, this is Mark Ass Brownlee's upcoming video. Do bad reviews kill companies? Talking about the backlash that he actually went through, and uh, I really wanted to look at it with you guys because this is this is a situation I'm very very interested in as someone who has beefed with multiple companies in the past uh, and have a lot of opinions that I guess are not exactly by the grain according to a lot of people like I was very surprised that my opinion on this entire thing was kind of in the minority in some places Son Goku thanks for the sub uh, but here's my minority opinion if you're if your product is shit and someone exposes the fact that your product is shit and your company fails it didn't it fail because you got exposed it failed because your product was shit, and you only have yourself to blame, okay? Sorry, sorry! Everyone can cook, but not everyone should cook. And these companies that have failed because of a bad review should have never cooked. All right, I review a lot of products, right? I've, I've talked about hundreds, maybe thousands of products at this point. That's our guy. But as many videos as I've made about products, there are way more products out there in the world that exist. That's a pretty basic take. <laughs> That's a very basic take. So the process of selecting which products to even review in the first place is like an art form to itself. Most products are just- By the way, a lot of people don't realize this. Son Goku, thank you for the other, another gifted sub. I appreciate it. A lot of people don't realize this, but so much time actually goes into deciding what video to make, okay? Like, um, uh, when, when you're a YouTuber and you ha you're making videos, let's say your, your capacity of upload is a video a week. That means you are dedicating an entire week to a video, but that week worth of dedication is not only, um, you know, the scripting, the recording, the editing, the producing, the title, the thumbnail, like that's not, that's not everything that goes into a video. The first, I, the first point of the video is the idea of making the video. Now, I, on my uh, second channel, Nuxanor, the, the greatest channel on all of YouTube, I upload two videos every single day, but I literally plan every video before I upload it, okay? Uh, a, a lot of people think that the working on a video starts at the time of recording. It literally does not. You could not be more wrong. The idea is so difficult as well. I have a massive list of ideas of stuff and and I upload two videos a day. And I still have a massive list of ideas and stuff that I'm throwing out and stuff that I'm deciding not to end up covering because I don't think it'll be worthwhile. Uh, but for someone like Mark Ass Brownlee, who's massive and has 20 million subscribers on YouTube, obviously that there's so much thought that goes into all these videos. Just meh, they're fine. Like they exist, they, they get made, they're fine, whatever. So they have to they have to reach a certain level of interest or or being really good to even be considered for a review or sometimes really bad really really bad. Yeah. See that's the thing. The beauty of a reviewer. God, I love the internet age so much. I, the reason why this for example is something I decided to cover even though I know that it's not really going to do well. It doesn't fit my my major audience. My major target audience are like, you know, anime fans, cartoon fans, you know, um, internet 
fans, people that are just internet on, interested in internet happenings, not necessarily tech fans. So I know that this isn't going to be a video that necessarily hits my specific core audience that well. Chaos fans and gooners! All right, thanks, chat. But, uh, uh... The reason why I am covering this is because I want to set to set a precedent that we're living in the age of the internet, okay? I think it's super important to recognize the fact that if these fucking companies were could get, would just be able to get away with this shit in a different time period, they should know that that time period is closed. I love the the whole free speech gimmick that you can say whatever you want. Brother, if a product is said to be good and you buy it and it's actually shit, I think that's a scam. So I think if you could have internet personalities that actually weed through that shit, that you don't actually have to buy it or pay for it, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is a net positive. So the people that are all crying and bitching about the, this poor company that made a terrible product is getting, and is getting, uh, their stock is now dropping. I don't feel bad for this company. They deserve this L. So there's been a lot of interesting discourse lately on this topic. There will be, you know, some negative reviews, and then a company will eventually go out of business, and then the internet- oh, no! poses Sorry. the question, do bad reviews kill companies? No, bad products kill companies. Bad reviews just put a spotlight on the inevitable. Do bad reviews kill companies or do bad products yes. kill companies? Yes, God, I'm so happy he's actually not, you know, bending the knee to this whole shit. I... Yeah, I, I do have a lot of thoughts. So two of the biggest examples that have been pointed to, especially on Twitter, were the Fisker Ocean Review that I did and the Humane AI pin from a couple days ago. So the Fisker saga was pretty well documented, but in case you missed it, okay. I reviewed a car, I I had a pretty horrible experience with it, documented it, published their review on the Autofocus channel. Should. And then a few months later, the entire company appears to be on life support, like likely filing for bankruptcy <laughs> soon. And Take that, baby! Take that, baby! It's like when people t are complain to me that I, I criticize Niji Sanji or whatever, and they're like, why would you complain about Niji Sanji? Niji Sanji never did anything to you. First of all, not 100% accurate. Second of all, because you have to know, the truth is just worth that much, bro. The truth is worth everything. The truth will set you free! Now, this startup, Humane, you know, they dropped their first product. This <laughs> no way they put it exactly where your seatbelt goes. Come on! Okay, no, but he could have put that on his other shoulder, right? Like, like come on. Bro. Pin, I review it. It's not super positive. A lot of people are saying the same thing. And Mark S. Brownlee bankrupted a company in 41 seconds. Slight criticism from a big YouTuber, let alone calling the product horrendous. It's bad enough to make a company go bust. Creators are much more powerful in 2024 than you think. Let's go, baby! This is a dub. This is a huge dub, baby. Give power to the people. That's what I want, brother. That's the beauty of free speech. Put power in the hands of the people, not these giga corps that are shoving products down your asses. I don't even think Humane Dumb. is going. If a, if a, if YouTubers really had this amount of power, well then honestly, that would be huge. That would be great, and uh, I I I, res I stand by and respect that. <laughs> Anywhere, by the way. But I think there is some pretty simple. No, he actually wasn't able to put it on the other shoulder because of the layout of the thing. That's crazy. So he actually had to put it on his left shoulder. The seatbelt side, oh my god. The logic we can use to decipher what the, the real danger is to these companies, which is, do you still get a bunch of negative reviews and then die as a company if the product is actually really good? But you know what, let's back up for a second. See, but here, th I think there's an important thing to mention, the fact that uh, every YouTuber that is in that, let's say Mark Ass Brownlee, for example, okay, this guy over here, if he was actually um, you know, the only reason why his word has weight is because of his reputation. If his reputation was just shitting on companies that he didn't like and bankrupting all of these companies just because he felt like it, even though the product wasn't bad, well, then obviously his word wouldn't be worth anything. His word is only worth as much as it is because he has been consistently on the mark. He has been consistently correct when he's reviewing tech shit. That is why people take what he says at face value. Brother, if... Freaking Ryan's toy reviews. Okay, bad example. Uh, freaking Darman would come out with a video on his channel with 20 million subscribers. Sniper Wolf on her 30 million subscriber channel would make a video saying, I think that iPhone is so much worse than Android. That will not impact them at all. What is a review? A little pet peeve of mine is I think people misuse or overuse that word a lot, Ooh, okay. but a review is just 
somebody uses a product and then just delivers their impressions on whether they think it's any good or not. How yeah, that, that's, and it's not just a product, you mean a movie reviewer. If there's a movie reviewer that says that a bad movie is actually good, I just will not trust him for future reviews unless it's obviously subjective, right? Someone's actually gonna make an actual non-satirical review talking about why why the Velma TV show is actually fire. Like, I, I will never see that person in the same light again. Sneeko says that Cuties is actually a good movie, and uh, yes, I think he's a pedophile. <laughs> How's it joke? How's it joke? Sort of. How well it actually worked, and if their honest opinion is if it's good, then that's the review. If it's bad, that's the review. That's basically it. And so I've been an advocate of good independent reviews yes, for what yes, feels like forever. Yes, you don't want all these stupid game companies to be the only people reviewing, right? You, you don't want you don't want freaking uh, those esports. Uh, news sites, game journalism to be peak reviews, where they're actually pay, just paid whatever the hell they get paid to promote shit. They, they give absolute dog shit ass gameplay. IGN, this game has an IGN score of 8.5, when in actuality it's literally unplayable. The thing about reviews is, if they're not honest, then they're basically useless. Yeah! I really strongly feel like- Then, if they're not honest, than their illegal advertisements. Everything that comes- Or malicious takedowns. It's either slander or unsolicited ads. Uh, that's a, that, is un, that is not honest reviewing. And I hate it. I literally hate it. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. YouTubers or anyone being able to say whatever they want about something, that's beautiful. Comes from a review. All the consequences and everything that comes around it, everything in the world of an ecosystem of reviews depends on the review being truthful and yes, actually sir. honest about yes, things. Sir. So let me, I'll just give an example. I Th that's why it's important to review shitty products. Like he could only review good shit, but then then what's the point? You have no baseline. Then you, you run into the syndrome problem from The Incredibles. If every product is amazing, then nothing is, you know? Like uh, this man needs to review everything. I've told this story before, but years ago, I remember I reviewed the first uh, Razer phone when it came out. So Razer gaming company, they make lots of stuff. They're getting into smartphones for the first time. So they made a phone. Yeah that appeals to the same target demographic of gamers. gamers. So you know, it had a bunch of upsides and Gamer downsides. Phone. Obviously gaming focused features. So it's got like front facing speakers and- Bro, the only thing I use a phone for gaming wise is um, emulators and pirating Nintendo games because it makes me feel strong and powerful. Otherwise I don't do any gaming on a phone. Um, that, that was all satire in case Nintendo lawyers watch this video. And a high refresh rate. The battery is pretty big, but also the camera was weak. And I specifically, I remember I, the vibration motor was horrible. And I remember calling it out. I remember saying this. Also, the vibration motor in this phone, trash, straight trash. I'm going to call myself so you can hear this. Uh -oh. Brother. <laughs> it sounds broken like it's but it sounded that way <laughs> out the box since day one so that is the razor phone just one of the worst vibration motors i've ever experienced in a new phone so okay fast forward a year right i'm at a briefing all right, all right. it's in new york city it's for the razor phone 2 and so they're walking me and some other people through this new phone they've made and they've got a bunch of changes it's got a glossy back they added wireless charging now Hell yeah the logo glows Hell and like yeah. the speakers are better and all this stuff and they're talking us through it. And then the guy turns to me and he says, and Marquez, you got to try the new vibration motor yo, in this phone. Yo! And it's such a niche thing, but I, sure enough, I try it and it's way better. And that's, to me, what, that's a big part of what reviews are all about. That's that everything. That is everything. That's amazing. Dude. Yes! What a great, this is a great response to the drama. See, if I would do it, I would have just made an entire video just calling these people pieces of shit. And, uh, but he's actually covering this so professionally. This, this is Mark Ass Brownlee we're talking about, okay? He has 20 million subs on YouTube. He, he doesn't need to engage in drama and controversy. Let's go, amazing story. That honest feedback turned into actually action for the company to make it better. So people who bought the first one knew what they were getting into, Yo. and people who bought the second one actually benefited from that. So that's number one. Honesty, obviously, super important. Yep, but the yep. second thing is these reviews are also definitely for the people that are 
watching them and consuming yeah. them. Duh. So you've probably been in the situation when you're, you're- I mean, it's partially for the company, right? But it's mostly for the people. Like, I, I, you see, I don't, <laughs> people think when I criticize companies, it's uh, because I want the company to do better and change. It's not. I have zero hope that they will ever do better and change. The the, uh, the criticism is purely to raise the awareness of some or in some way, or to have a good time being a little bit of an asshole about it uh, in in regards to talking to my audience. Um, I've criticized m many many a company in my day, never because I expected the company to actually learn from the criticism. I just hope perhaps in a future generation uh, something would change because the people that watched it that are passionate about that topic want to change the industry. When I made my video criticizing Crunchyroll years ago, it's not because I thought Crunchyroll would watch it and be like, you know what, in good faith, you're right, and listen. But I was hoping that anime fans in the next generation would maybe not necessarily do something like that. You're about to buy something and you just want to double check, so you, you hop on YouTube, you search it up, watch a couple of videos about the product just to make sure you're not missing anything, and then you either decide on the moment or later that day, like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely gonna buy it. We've all been there. I, that's the reason that's exactly how this YouTube channel started. Like my first ever tech video Yo! was reviewing a laptop, but specifically I, I bought the laptop with my allowance money in high school and I found a Windows Media Center remote in the PCI slot that wasn't in any of the other reviews. So the first thing I decided to do was talk through it in a video so that anyone else who bought the laptop after me would know about it. Little Marcus Brown. So you're thinking about buying a thing, you watch a couple reviews of the thing, you learn everything you need to know, Boom, success. But here's yes. where it gets a little bit interesting. All right, all right, all right. I do have right. a bit of an extra dimension on my hands with these videos because I know that there's no way that every single person watching a review of every single product is one of those people who was considering buying it. No, I at this point, most of it's for entertainment, right? Um, see, but here's the thing. I don't think that makes it any worse. I think as long as you're actually spreading out honesty, as long as you are putting some human honesty into the world, it really doesn't matter what the intentions would be. For all I care, his intentions could be just making money. His intentions could be, you know what, this product is shit. I'm gonna make a video about how this product is shit because it's gonna make me hella money when I do that. Even if something like that would have been going through his head, I would not care at all. He is being honest about a shit product and okay, they're facing repercussions because their product was shit. They're bad. Sorry if I'm if I'm extra angry or unhinged. I just, I have no sympathy for for uh, the people that are trying to cancel this guy or the company that's trying to farm sympathy points. I get that comment actually in person all the time. I, you know, I watch the reviews even though I'm not buying any of this stuff. So I know that a lot of people, in fact, most people watching these videos are actually just here to watch an interesting, informative, good video in general. An, for entertainment. An entertaining video. Yeah. And so the way that I satisfy those things is much more subjective, I think. Like everyone has a different way they do it. Everyone has a different target sure. demographic. Personality, vibes, whatever you're putting into your video to entertain people, that's all fine. Again, I think um, intention is not really what matters here. It's execution. Uh, I, I don't care if you have the, the most, the least noble intentions on the planet, as long as you're making a video or you're just honestly talking about something, I, I, I don't, I have no, no qualms with that at all. But that's a little bit of a new dimension. So then I think if we go back to the original question, so can, uh, can a video be, can a video kill a company? I'll use the uh, Humane and Fisker examples specifically. The Fisker Ocean was a terrible car. It is a terrible car. <laughs> I've reviewed it's about a bad car. 40. What are you not allowed to say it's a bad car because it's a bad car? It is a bad car. But you can't say that because your words hold power and the car company might be in trouble. Well, tough noogies. 50 different cars in the past few years. Made videos about many of them. This is the first one where I genuinely couldn't wait to be done driving it. Like, it just had tons of problems. Bugs, missing features, safety issues. Like, it's just oh bad, God. right? So I review the thing. I give people what I feel is safety a fair issues? assessment that also doubles as a warning not to buy this bad car. Um, so hopefully it's entertaining and informative to the majority of people who weren't thinking about buying the car, but also that it is as honest as possible with the people who are. And maybe I think it's important to be honest as possible even for the entertainment factor. 
Uh, I think that uh, this is real life we're talking about, all right? There, there needs to be, obviously, that level of integrity. Um, but holy shit, look at the stock. It's worth less than a penny. <laughs> it's eight cents. The stock is eight cents. How? It went down by 98%. Oh my God. Maybe a week or two later, the company's stock price is plummeting to an all-time low and they appear to be like filing for bankruptcy. Cue the internet oh, well. going nuts, which I, gu I guess I get it. Like, obviously it makes a nice headline. Like, oh, this this review came out and it killed this company. This Based. review bankrupted yes. all of Fisker. Yes. Like there was a whole morning brew thread on how Fisker Who's that? Bankrupted all of Fisker, maybe. Like there was a whole more- YouTuber Mark S. Brownlee recently tested Fisker's latest EV and called it the worst guy I've ever reviewed. It got four, bi four million views, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Running brew thread on how Fisker handled this video so poorly that they're now gonna go bankrupt because of it. Also, there were there were whole stock investments themes. See, but here's the thing. If the car was actually good, then he would get flamed for giving a bad review. His credibility would in the gutter. No one would ever trust him ever again. And uh, surprise, surprise, Fisker would be fine. Like, I think that's that's the main point. If the product would have been good, then no one would have cared. Like, and the same thing could be said by by so, so many things. It's, fu it's fucking unreal. Ch and criticizing him only spread this out more. You know, th this video that, about Mark Ass Brownlee, got so much more traction because of the people criticizing him. Now so many more people know that this product is shit. Do you think any of the people criticizing Mark Ass Brownlee is actually gonna buy the product now? No! Not a single one of them! No one is gonna say, I can't believe Mark Ass Brownlee would make a video to destroy, to destroy this company, it's so wrong of him! But are you gonna buy the fucking useless pin for $700? Uh, no, it's shit. Do you see what I'm saying here? Like the Streisand effect is only amplifying his message. Like, who are you saving? What, who are you helping right now? Channels. Anyone that wants to cancel Mark S. Brownlee over insulting the Fisker car honestly should buy a Fisker car. I hear the safety features are great. Saying this was like a paid promoted attack against the Fisker stock price. Like it got pretty crazy. But that's, did that's wild. one review kill the entire company? No! Say, no! The bad car did! To zoom out a bit, I would really... I think it's important to zoom out a bit, actually. First of all, I was not the only one to review the car, not even close. And so yes, the stock price did drop after my video, but the stock was in free fall for many, many months before my video too. Bro. And if you zoom out on YouTube or in the car oh review space God, in general, I was far from the only person saying these things about the car for all of these months. Many other reviewers had been having a plethora of issues, even stuff that I didn't have with this thing. I actually, I feel like that might be the easiest way to tell if a review is honest or not like we're 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 all reviewing the same product basically if, you, if we all have the same thing so we're all going to find a lot of the same things we're all eventually going to have a lot of the same upsides downsides yeah. if there are issues it's like it's, they, it's almost like it's an honest review or something that's crazy they may eventually surface so yeah they're 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 probably going to agree with each other a bunch of honest reviews they'll all say a lot of the same stuff oh and also the in the u.s the stock price th there's this thing where if uh if a stock what is it if it's below a, a dollar for it. <laughs> however many days in a row <laughs> oh, then they'll get no. a warning that they may be delisted and they have six months to get the stock price back up over a dollar and yeah but that's like the ultimate red flag for investors no one wants to invest in a stock and then get we might remove your stock from the market yeah and fisker had just received that notice right around the same time that my i think right before my video came out actually and if you're an investor you're looking at yeah! that that's the type of stuff that really tanks the stock price if you're asking me and if you're asking me personally i i literally don't care what the stock price is of any company of any product i review i just don't care. <laughs> and so if I'm if I'm talking about a <laughs> you know I had to pause there. He's like, I just that he's thinking about all the different companies that he's invested in. Just don't care. <laughs> product that will never have any That's a joke. I have no idea what his investing practices are. Anything to do with what I say about the product. And I, I hope that's not true about other people either. And I shouldn't even have to say this. I I'm not invested in any companies never mind. that I cover. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> Wait, you're not invested in like Apple or something when you review iPhones? Or any of those? Come on, man. You gotta be invested in some of those. I don't think that that's insider trading. It's just a matter of trying to make an informative, educational, and honest video review. 
that's my goal. My only goal is to do that. And I don't have any duty to any of the companies whose products I cover. Yes, sir. It yes, is sir. only to the people watching the video. Yes, so now, sir! That's it. That's where your loyalties lie. That's where your agency is. Fuck these people. Honestly. Okay, fast forward to, you know, pretty recently, the Humane AI pin comes out. A lot of the same stuff, right? Like, this pin has a lot of missing promises. The, you know, the things it does, it doesn't actually do super well. The battery life is bad. It overheats. The laser projector is kind of bad. Like, the list just goes on and on. I try to be as fair as possible. <laughs> this and looks as like such shit. <laughs> oh, no. Formative as possible. But I'm also absolutely not about to sugarcoat or leave anything out to protect any company's yes, $700 device with a monthly subscription. Not into that. But yet, yeah, even still, there are some threads blowing up saying... I find it distasteful, almost unethical to say this when you have 18 million subscribers. Hard to explain why. But with great reach comes great responsibility. Potentially killing someone else's nascent project reeks of carelessness. First, do no harm. What the fuck is this? <laughs> this is the worst tweet ever. See, but here's the thing. If I would see a tweet like this from Daniel Vassalo, okay, uh, I would... I, I will never trust another take Daniel Vassalo has. He is obviously a bad reviewer. He is not someone that should be trusted. Like, this is stupid. Unethical to say that it's a bad product? What does that even mean, it's unethical to say that it's a bad product? It's unethical for doctors to say that Diet Coke isn't healthy. Really? Is it really unethical to say that? Hard to explain why. Well, yeah, obviously hard to explain why. It's the same head-ass morons on Twitter that it's like, hard to explain why, but somehow it rubs me the wrong way when Mr. Beast uh, feeds the homeless people. It rubs me the wrong way. Is there something demonic about him helping poor people get surgeries that they needed? Dang, it's extra bad what I did to this poor company. And, you know, maybe you could argue since this is the biggest channel that covered it, maybe there's some extra impact there. But again, I would say... Good. To zoom out. Good. I just zoom out again. I am not, I was not the first actually even to cover the Humane Pin, but I'm also far from the only one to talk about it. And even a little inside baseball, when a product comes out that's this notable or this bad, uh, which isn't very often, a lot of reviewers like that's, it's a very, it's stressful. You want to make sure you get everything right. But also that's, that's what you do. You are, who, where are your loyalties? If you say that this is a good product, then your audience is gonna buy a shit product. They're gonna spend $700 on a shit product if you said it was good, okay? If you say it's bad, you know, the company that is literally trying to scam people by buying a shit product and advertising it as, you know, Jesus 3, uh, you know, who, who do you have your loyalties to? I'd say the people, honestly. Like, I... Look, I'm, I'm a capitalist at heart, okay? Listen, brother. I want a company to make a good product and do fucking well, okay? I, I believe in that shit. I really do. But if it's not a good product, then they deserve to flounder. And they deserve to fail. Because they didn't make a good product. Nothing personal, kid. A lot of us are literally trading notes. and like trying to figure out, like, when mine died in two hours and overheated on my chest without doing anything, I thought it was, like, an issue with mine. And I was texting a couple others and... Sure enough, they're having the same things happen to them. So we're all trying to be as... So it turns out the shit product is actually just not good. As wow. thorough as possible and making sure reviews are truthful. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you get a bunch of truthful reviews. Now you could argue, and I think the, the guy on Twitter did, that uh, the packaging was too clickbaity. And I totally get it. I disagree. I fucking disagree. It's true. What, what is clickbaity about this? The worst product I've ever reviewed for now. And it was the worst product he ever reviewed for now. That is not clickbaity. But I also stand by our title and thumbnail, based, and based, especially the end based, of the title. But based. keep in mind the dimension that that most of the people who, who see this in their feed and their subscription box have never heard of the Humane AI pin. And this will be the first time they hear about it. And they click on it, hopefully, and then they're delivered with a thoughtful, well-considered balanced and honest and entertaining and informative video that happens to be a review so look yeah and also it's negative and you know what that that's part of the job props to my boy Marquez brownlee that guy god i love that dude bro bro is spitting right now he, he responded to this in such a well thought out way i would have just laughed at twitter idiots i would have thought oh this is obvious and just laughed and probably end up making the the twitter shit storm even crazier you know that that would have literally been my response. I would have seen this. I would have been like, bro, you morons. 
It's not my fault that the company's floundering. It's the company's fault for making a shit product. They don't have laughed at them. This guy actually went through it. This is a good response. I've reviewed a lot of bad products in my day. And Marquez Brown. You might remember some of them. You might remember the Dyson headphones or the Red Hydrogen One or the Pixel Slate or the HTC U Ultra. The list goes on. But one thing has definitely been clear and consistent throughout all of this. One with... thing has the pronunciation of his name. Night and Marquez Brownlee. Well said, Will Smith. Which is anytime the company goes under, it, you don't get those bad reviews without the product being bad to begin with, obviously. I have a massive nah. amount of respect and appreciation for people and groups of people who are actually making new stuff, like building products. That's the hard part at the end of the day. And we get to get a whole bunch of new exciting things that might change the world, and that's really exciting. It is exciting. But my reviews, technically, are not for them. All that any honest review actually does is be is honest. Just accelerate whatever was already going on. I mean, I suppose that 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 is sort of true. Uh, yeah. Ultimately, you have a lot of situations where you have YouTubers that are paid to uh, to talk about video games and make believe that they're better than they are, or um, hype up different shit or even lie and negatively review shit because there's something they don't like like this happens and that's disgusting and that should be criticized because the beauty of youtube is that the, the whole honesty aspect the fact that the fact that i am a youtuber and you should definitely not trust a word i'm saying because i'm a youtuber i am literally you know benefiting by socially manipulating you into going to my patreon and giving me money okay like don't trust the word i'm fucking saying however know that it is my best interest to not lie to you when I am reviewing something. So don't trust me because I'm a nice guy. Trust me because it is my best interest to foster this fake relationship of trust with you. And if Mark Ass Brownlee over here would have sit, would have sat down and he would have said something was good when it actually wasn't, um, then that is the quickest way to lose that trust. And uh, obviously he doesn't want that. Purely from a monetary clout, whatever the fuck perspective. And that's why you could trust him. Think of it that way. Okay, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. It was a great video by the legendary and Marquez Brownlee. That guy. He uh he did a he did a <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I Will Smith has ruined Marquez's name for me. Literally ruined it. I can, that's the only way I could think of Mark Ass Brownlee now. Night. Marquez Brownlee. Marquez Brownlee. God, he says it was such riz. Anyway, thank you so much for joining on this occasion. I hope I wasn't too hard on the, the fucking jerkwads out there on the Twitterverse. Um, however, I regret absolutely nothing, and they deserve it. And, uh, yeah, suck, suck a dick, dumb shits. If you made it to the end, click one of these two videos, which also will definitely get me canceled. See you live on Game. Stay weird, fam.